The Arma Creighton is so tough that it actually breaks really easily. Does that make sense? No, not at all. Oh. Well, today, right now, we are gonna put a whole bunch of parts on this truck, some of which are repair parts, because we have this giant mess of brokenness right here, but most of them are upgrade parts because I am not easy on this truck. What about handling performance? Are we gonna do anything about that? Yes, because uh, handling is actually a big deal on these trucks. This one at least had horrible steering out of the box. Most of those issues were caused by the servo saver just being way too loose. So I'll go over what I did to fix that. But this servo itself is actually really weak. So I got a new servo that's supposed to be much stronger and faster. We're also going to change the fluid thickness and all three differentials and in the shocks. Those few minor things should help with ground handling a lot. Plus, it'll probably help with air control too. And if you didn't see it, we've got a brand new M2C chassis because the chassis is bent, as you can see right here. But it's also tweaked a little bit. There's a twist in the rear of the chassis. And I have absolutely no idea how that happened. Oh no. But besides those things, I actually have a box full of things. All of which is going on this truck in this video. This is a big guy. Now we're gonna start by rebuilding this front bulkhead because it has a broken hinge pin block in the back, which I've got new ones. Also replacing with a aluminum differential housing. We're gonna replace the tie rods because this one's broken with EXB upgrades. We have a cracked steering knuckle in the front. We're replacing that. M2C hinge pins and also a cracked upper control arm right here. We're gonna start with all of that, mount them onto the new chassis, along with replacing the differential fluid. Now these two screws are damaged from concrete landings, so I had to hammer in a Torx head to get these out. This one was shimmed from the factory. However, the pinion pulls in and out a little bit. So I'd also like to put a shim behind the gear here. Now with the differential sitting inside the new metal diff housings, it actually felt like it needed a second shim. There was a little bit of lateral movement. But as soon as I put the differential cover on, it actually tightened up way too much and was binding. So only one shim worked perfectly. Plus one very thin shim between the pinion gear and the pinion gear bearings. These new aluminum diff housings come with a new outer pinion bearing, but you have to reuse that large inner one. I had to order shims for the pinion gear here, so while we're waiting on that, I'm gonna replace this upper control arm and the steering block. We've got some 100K fluid for this differential. Letting as much of that old fluid drain out as possible. Here's the shim for the pinion gear. This pack I got comes with different sizes, so you just find the one or two that fits the best. put this bumper adapter on there. The front module is now complete. So now we're gonna mount it to the chassis along with this EXB basher bumper and move on to the next section. This 
center diff is getting 500,000 fluid. It's not all the way full. Oh, that stuff's thick. Squeeze the bottle with pliers. Both of the screws on this side of the steering servo are completely worn out. The case is starting to split right there because of it. Good thing we got a new one. And this servo is a little bit too tall, so I'm adding some washers as some spacers underneath the servo mount. While I'm letting that center diff fluid settle a little bit, I'll show you what I've done to the steering on this previously. The spring on the servo saver here had nowhere near enough pressure to turn this thing to its full potential. And this is nothing proprietary, it's been done before, but I used snap rings to take up some of the extra slack in the spring to put more pressure on the servo saver here. Now I ordered a whole kit of these snap rings. You don't have to go with the whole kit, but I'll put a link to this in the description if it's still available. I think I used 916. However, I am not 100% positive on that. And Arma used bushings inside the steering linkage here instead of bearings. So I took these brass bushings out and put these bearings in. I do have a more in-depth video on that and I will link that video in the description of this one. While I'm at it, I'll have a link to this servo in there too. Looks like our diff fluid is nice and settled. We're gonna get this back together, install it in the car, and then get this rear end together. Now this rear diff has a lot of pinion to spur gear play. We're gonna have to remove all that slot. Another single shim. We're gonna do the same stuff to this rear diff as we did to the front one, but we'll see if it takes the same shims that the front one took or if it works out in a different way. There we go. A few more things to mount up. Change the shock oil. Probably other things I'm forgetting. Good job if you caught it. Yes, I did put the steering servo in backwards. <laughs> I knew the whole time. We're going to do a drop test with the stock fluid in these shocks. Here we go. What fluid should we use? A hundred. Okay, hundred it is. A girl second. turtle got bitten by the boy turtle. Okay. I know now. Hundred weight fluid. Still slaps. Quick test drive. Oh, don't tell mom. That new servo makes all the difference. It'll actually do turns at high speeds now. Be gentle with her. That's a tree. Is that awesome? Yeah. Wow, what a difference that servo made. That of all of these upgrades, as far as performance goes, that was definitely the most important. Before any upgrades at all, it would take almost the entire yard to be able to do a 180 turn 
if you're on any more than even a quarter throttle. After adding those clips to the servo saver spring, that probably cut the turning radius down in about half or so. And now with this new servo, you turn the wheels and the rear end starts to kick around on its own. I have a feeling that new shock oil is gonna make a big difference with jumps. We're gonna find that out really soon. Here's a quick hint to what I have planned for part of a future video. So hopefully all these new durability hop-ups will keep it strong and beefy forever. No, definitely not.